After SHTF, the grocery shelves will get ripped bare. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can take an excellent plant for preppers to grow and turn that one plant into hundreds of seeds that you can then turn into hundreds of new plants. Hundreds of new plants that will help you from getting hungry while the non-preppers are starving, right after the channel intro. Welcome to this channel. This channel is all about learning how to prepare for when the dark times come and for when the grid goes down and the grocery shelves are emptied. And today we're going to learn not only the importance of seed saving, but also how to do some seed saving so that you can take one simple vegetable or herb plant that you've grown and turn it into dozens or hundreds of new plants which means that every year you'll be ensuring that you have more and more food to eat. And just to try to put this even simpler, imagine only buying the first plant or plants, and then when you save the seeds from that plant, not only can you replant your garden the following year from those seeds for free, you should actually be able to make your garden even larger with those same seeds, again, all free. And today we're actually going to save the seeds from the basil plant because this plant is a little unique compared to many other plants when it comes to saving seeds. And I plan on doing more of these seed saving videos for other vegetables and herb plants in the future. Now you may ask why would preppers want to know how to grow and save basil seeds? Well, besides an assortment of other vegetables and herbs that I like to grow, basil has a lot of vitamins and nutrients in it, plus it just tastes darn good. So along with giving you a vitamin boost in your food, it can also help to turn your boring old long-term storage prepper food into much better tasting food. And another reason that's kind of personal for me, my wife and I regularly make spaghetti sauce from the tomatoes that we grow. And basil is an excellent addition to that sauce. Plus I've also got quite a bit of spaghetti bites from the LDS family home storage where that spaghetti sauce will really complement that spaghetti after SHTF. So with any vegetable or herb that you want to save the seeds from, your best bet is to get heirloom seeds to grow your first plants with. Because with the regular hybrid seeds that you buy at the store, you just don't know what kind of a plant that you're going to end up with if you save the seeds from that hybrid plant and replant those seeds the following year. Now the caveat here is, is that to start growing heirloom plants so you can save their seeds for your next year's crop, the caveat is that you have to acquire the heirloom seeds in the first place so that you can begin growing the first plants in which to start saving the seeds from. So if you can't get heirloom seeds from a friend, then you're probably going to have to buy the seeds to start with. And then every year after that, then you can just save the seeds from the plants and replant those seeds and never have to buy seeds again, which will be great for growing your food after SHTF happens and the grocery stores have all been looted. Now, if you don't have any heirloom seeds already, I'll provide a link below in the comments section to the heirloom basil seeds that I have had good luck with. And if you don't wish to buy the seeds online, then you can probably also find them for sale in a store that deals in natural products come the springtime. So basil seeds don't need to be buried very deep when you plant them in the spring. I basically just drop them on top of the dirt and then push a tiny bit of dirt over them. And then after three weeks or so, you'll get tiny basil plants that will grow into mature plants over the course of the growing season. Now when you harvest the basil leaves for your dinners and your meals, you just want to pick the larger leaves off of the stems in order to let the basil plant to continue growing because the smaller leaves will grow into larger leaves as the plant matures. And the plants will end up producing small flowers later into the growing season. And it's these small flowers that you're eventually going to be going after for saving the seeds from the plants. So now that the basil plants have had all summer to grow and produce, and in this part of the video it's now fall, but you'll see that many of the small flowers have started to turn brown and brittle. And once the flower is brown and brittle is when you're wanting to start saving the seeds for next year's crop instead of having to buy more seeds to grow more plants next year. But real quick, a link to an anonymous poll should be appearing in the upper right hand corner of the screen just about now. And please go and take that poll and let me know, do you wish to see more of these heirloom seed saving videos? Videos that would be released from time to time showing how to save different types of seeds. Please go take that poll and please vote yes or no. 
And now back to the video. I have found that it's easiest just to find a stem with a bunch of dried flowers on them and just strip the flowers from the stem. Now here's a better look at one of the little flowers that I've stripped from that heirloom basil plant. And as I tear up that little dried up flower, those little black dots that fall onto the plate are the actual small little seeds that the basil plant produces. And I typically get three to four seeds per flower. Now, if you're only saving a few dozen seeds, then manually tearing apart each flower to get those four little seeds is fine. But if you're going to be attempting to harvest a bunch of seeds from hundreds of those little flowers, then let me show you a little trick that's commonly practiced with people who save basil seeds. First, you get a metal kitchen strainer that has small straining holes, for lack of better terms. But with the metal mesh and the small holes, you can just kind of push the flowers back and forth to tear them up to release those small little seeds. Now, of course, you're going to lose a few seeds like this, meaning that you're probably not going to completely tear up every little flower in order to release all of its seeds. But this method is much quicker than doing them one at a time, and you're still going to end up with hundreds of new seeds. And now since I've got the flowers good and ground up and have released a good amount of the seeds, now I'm going to take them outside to blow the tore up flower petals from the small pile that I've got here. The trick here is that the dried flower petals are much lighter than the seeds, so when you blow on them, the flower petals will blow away while the majority of the seeds will remain behind. Now, of course, you may lose a few seeds doing this, but again, when you're dealing with hundreds of seeds, this way is much quicker. And then I'll just shake them around a little bit and keep repeating this until all of the flower petals are pretty much gone and only the seeds are left. And now you can see here that I have hundreds of those little basil seeds left over. And hopefully the video is clear enough that you can get a good look at them to see what they look like. Now whenever I first harvest a batch of seeds, I always like to plant a few just to make sure that they germinate and start growing. I've pretty much found that if they will grow after you've harvested the seed, then they'll almost certainly grow in the spring after they've been stored all winter long. So now in this little recycled growing pot, I'm going to plant four seeds to test to see if the seeds that I just harvested will germinate and grow into plants or not. And I should point out that when I'm testing out newly harvested seeds, that I will usually plant four or five of them so I get a pretty good idea of the germination rate. For example, if two of the four seeds actually sprout, then I'll know that I have about a 50% germination rate. However, if I were actually planting these seeds into my garden, I would actually plant two seeds. This pretty much guarantees that you'll have a spot with at least one plant growing in it just in case one of the two seeds doesn't germinate. And then if both seeds do germinate and begin growing, then I'll end up just plucking the smaller of the two plants and letting the larger and stronger plant grow. And like I said earlier in the video, basil seeds don't need to be buried very deep. I'll basically put them on top of the soil and then push a tiny bit of dirt over them. And then I'll just add a little bit of water to the soil. And the date that I filmed this video was on October 18th, 2018. And in a few moments, we'll see if they germinate and start growing or not. Now the way that I save my seeds is by simply placing them into a small envelope and either keeping them in a dark closet or keeping them in my refrigerator. And I'm no seed expert. I think just storing them in a closet will keep them good for a year or two. But if you're wanting to save your seeds for longer than that, then most of them will do better by storing them in your refrigerator. So now it's been a little over three weeks since I first planted the seeds. And at the time of this filming, it's now October 11th, 2018. And we can see here that all four seeds that I originally planted have germinated and are starting to grow. Now three of them are really starting to take off, but the fourth one is really struggling and will probably die. And hopefully you can make out that fourth plant that's really struggling that's at the top of the growing pot. So now we can see that this was a successful saving of these heirloom basil seeds. And we can see how just four basil plants produced hundreds of seeds. How just four basil plants would be able to be turned into hundreds of new plants the following year, which would serve my family well should SHTF happen. And obviously I'm not promoting only growing basil in this video. Basil is just another variety of herbs and vegetables to grow. Just one more thing to help complement your other food preps. 
And these basil seedlings that I have here, I think I'm just going to let them grow. And I think I'm going to see if they grow large enough indoors, just by the sunny window, for us to pluck the leaves off of them for our dinners throughout the winter. Now I may end up having to pluck the smaller of the plants and allow only the biggest one to grow, but I'm going to test it out. So now I want to hear from you. Please comment below and share with the community. Do you regularly practice saving heirloom seeds? And if so, are you pretty successful with it every year? And what are your favorite plants to save seeds from? And if you've not started saving seeds yet, do you plan to start practicing it? And after SHTF and after the store shelves are emptied, you also won't be able to buy yeast. And even if you stock up on it beforehand, yeast typically doesn't have that long of a shelf life. Meaning that if you've stocked up on it, then it probably won't work when you need it to make bread after SHTF. So to see a video on how a prepper can easily cultivate their own wild yeast and use it for bread making, and then even see a recipe for bread using that wild yeast, then click on the link that should be appearing in the upper right hand corner of the screen about now to learn more about this easy prepper skill. And if you'd like to see a video on how you can easily save heirloom tomato seeds so that you can turn just one tomato plant into hundreds of new tomato plants, because remember, tomatoes will go good with basil, then click on the video that should be appearing on the right side of the screen just about now. Anyways, folks, if you made it this far, hey, thank you very much for watching, and I pray that you have a good night.